Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman, for having me here and for holding these hearings. They're critically important. Um, <clears throat> I, today, rather than giving extensive uh, testimony, I'm going to show a, a brief video that I took when I was in the Sudan um, approximately 12 months ago. I'll just say a few words as by way of preface. By way of preface, I went as a representative of the Pueblo Institute, now part of Freedom House, to investigate reports of slavery and the forced incarceration of uh, children uh, and uh, other reports that these children were being sent to the battlefront. Um, my sources were uh, children themselves who had escaped, uh, parents and families of these children, uh, clergy and international NGOs who work there, and I spoke to members of the Sudanese government as well. I, uh, as I alluded to, I, I snuck a video camera into the country and uh, in uh, safe houses and basements was able to uh, gather testimony from uh, a number, about six hours worth of testimony of which we're going to see a few minutes here. And I also uh, ventured out uh, my last day there about 400 kilometers into the desert uh, to see uh, a camp that did hold at one point 228 kids who subsequently have disappeared. We don't know where they went. Um, by way of that introduction, uh, perhaps we can show the tape and then um, if I could make a few comments uh, after the tape and uh, then respond to any questions. Thank you. And please do. And without objection, your full testimony would be made part of the record. Of course, one of the uh, invariable rules of the universe is that uh, these things don't come off on the first try. Uh, while we're waiting, maybe I made a couple of comments. I think that you know what I uh, felt I, I documented was able to document while I was there was really three forms of slavery. One is uh, comes out of the uh, a tribal tradition that is exploited by the government. The government uh, in the 80s armed um, Arab tribes quite heavily in their battle against uh, the uh, black African tribes, particularly the Dinka, and um, certainly encouraged them to keep the spoils of war, including children that they um, took in that conflict. And these children are now enslaved in great numbers by uh, their Arab masters. The second version is uh, of slavery occurs directly at the hands of uh, government agents, the popular defense forces in particular, who were alluded to previously, these mujahideen or, or warriors of the jihad are poorly paid or not paid at all, and once again uh, take children and women as, uh, as part of their compensation. The third phenomenon, which I found the most disturbing, was um, the systematic, are we, can we go here? Okay, I'll stop. Fortunately, people here can't see it. I don't know, can we, can we turn that this way so we can... Can Mr. Jones? Can Congressman Payne see the... Thank you. 
series captured at Clemson camps, the rise of a new Arab movement undergo first Islamization and military training, and are then sent off to war. This ITF footage is a rare look at one of these camps. Apologize for the quality of the audio there. I know it's very difficult to understand, but the the, the point was that you know, early on the, in, there were there were testimony from a number of children who had been taken from their parents and put in these high security camps. And one child said that he was slated to go off to battle, and it was only by intervention of a military officer that he did not. These kids are rounded up in kashas, whereby a, a truck comes into a marketplace and they round up all the black African appearing children. And I want to make a comment about this, about this because uh, Ms. McKinney uh, asked before, uh, the, what is the role of color in this whole conflict? Because if you talk to leaders of the Sudanese government, and let me tell you, they're, they're very, they're very sophisticated. Tarabi was educated in Oxford. The Minister of, Inf of Information, a fellow named Shengeti, was, uh, got a PhD from Boston University a few years ago. And they really know how to talk to Westerners and put the spin on their story. Uh, and they'll say to you, look, I mean, this is, this is, we're not racist. Look, I'm black. Look at the color of my skin. And and, they, and they're saying, why, why would we be racist against other people of our own country who are also black? But the Sudan is a unique racial environment. The Nile, over centuries, has mixed genes from one end of the country to the other. So that you have a gradual gradation of color from light to very dark. And it blends almost imperceptibly. But at the extremes, you can clearly see differences. And after a very short time there, it was very easy for me as a foreigner to know who was a Dinka, who was a Shilluk, who was a Nur, who was from the Arab North by just looking. And if I can make those types of perceptual judgments, it's easy for the natives to do. And it didn't take me long to realize that there's a whole hierarchy in that country based on race and tribal associations, and that the people of the South, the black Africans, are the people who are victimized by racism and by slavery. And um, I think people who deny that are not being truthful about their attitudes towards race in the country of Sudan. Um, I'll just close there and uh, uh, be available for questions later. <laughs> 